like to welcome the victorious uh, Florida Gators and their head coach, Mike White, with an opening statement here. Coach, congratulations. Thank you. What a game, my goodness. Um, we did enough in the end. Uh, the Wolf Pack um, were terrific. Uh, they, uh, they continued to fight. They, uh, they made great adjustments. They sped the game up. We, I thought we did a great job of controlling tempo, which is the biggest key to, to the game. <clears throat> thought it might put us, if we played well enough, in a position to have some success, both offensively and defensively. Um, and they, I don't know, 12, 14 minutes left in the game, somewhere in that neighborhood, anxious to watch it. They did a great job of uh, changing their defense, pressed us in both the, um, the half court and the full court, and um, sped us up a little bit. And they got downhill and transition offense. Um, and now we know, you know, we know firsthand, we saw it live and, uh, and you know, up close, uh, why this team's won so many games the last couple of years. It was a big win for us. Uh, Nevada is terrific, and uh, we did enough down the stretch, led by these two seniors, had enough poise and toughness. Um, a few possessions there late where it could have got away from us. I mean, we could have lost all poise. We lost a little bit of poise at times, uh, but did enough, made some huge plays down the stretch uh, to uh, obviously survive in advance. This time we'll take questions for student athletes. Please raise your hand, and we'll get a microphone holder over to you. Front row and left side. Jalen, you guys held Caleb to 5 of 22 shooting. What did you guys do defensively to make him so inefficient tonight? We just tried to um, slow him down in transition. Um, both the Martin brothers are really good in transition. Um, and him playing more in the half court, I feel like we were able to play more team defense on him. Obviously, uh, both the Martin brothers are, are really good. So we were just trying to slow him down in transition and make him take tough uh, contested shots all night. Other questions for our student athletes? Left side. Chris Quare, Orlando Sentinel, Corvarius. Um, what do you think happened in those last 15 minutes that uh, you know it almost got away from you guys? And, and how did you feel like you were able to be part of the turnaround? Um, I felt like we kind of regressed a little bit, kind of like how we were playing early in the season, like you know watching the clock a little bit. Like we did have a significant lead, and I felt like we got a little too casual. So um, you know I was trying to. You know, same along with J-Hug, kind of like remind the team that it was far from over. We had to stay locked in, kind of in the moment. And that way we was like staying together. We eventually dug ourselves out and could do enough to finish the game. Left side, second row. Chris Murray, Nevada Sportsnet. To, to Jalen, obviously uh, Nevada made a couple of huge second half comebacks in last year's NCAA tournament. They made a run at you guys. What, what do you think uh, was able to stem that tide and not let them push ahead like they were able to do in, the, in a couple games last year in this tournament? It was it was really just a team effort. Um, I feel like during that 10-minute stretch, like I, I would say like probably like six or seven minutes of it, they were kind of controlling the tempo and they were able to speed us up and we were playing like uncontrollably fast and we were making jump passes which, which are not allowed in the program. So um, that kind of stemmed their surge and we kind of played a little bit out of character. but. Um, a point in time, probably like three or four minutes left in the game, we were able to snap back and kind of get into our rhythm. And, and we were also in the bonus, too. And uh, so they were, they were starting to foul a little bit. So it helped us get to the free throw line, stop the clock, make some shots. And then we were able to set our defense as well. And we, we ran a little bit of 13 at them, which is a zone, which kind of disrupted them. They were trying to shoot it really fast. So us playing the 13 kind of slowed the clock down as well. So it was good for us. Any other questions for student athletes? not, guys, you can go back to the locker room. Thank you very much. Congratulations. We'll take uh, questions for the head coach right now. Please raise your hand, and we're going to start on the aisle on the left side in the back. Uh, coach, we'll start with what Jalen just talked about, switch to the 1-3-1. One, one. You, had you guys seen anything in uh, late? Uh, had you guys seen yeah. anything on tape that, that decided off it was going to be close so we'd break that out? Or what, just maybe describe what you did to implement that switch late, because it really threw them off. Yeah, sure. Um, what we saw in on tape was <clears throat> just how dynamic they are offensively. And, you know, you, you've got a little bit of time here where you want to um, sharpen all your, your tools, if you will, you know, leading into the NCAA tournament, of course. And we worked on three or four different zones this week in preparation, just knowing that, again, uh, we want to be able to throw everything at them. And 
we had decided to, to run our, our 13 much earlier than that, but, but we had to score to get in it. And we just couldn't score. And, you know, I had, I had to remind, you know, I've got, a, I've got a great staff, and actually one of them had suggested it early, and then the other, the other couple guys kept saying, well, we got to get in 13, and, and we had to remind each other, well, we got to score. And they did a great job of speeding us up. They made us play a little bit faster, and if we had just been able to convert one of those floaters, um, contested layups, you know, one of those, and they're great because they, they've got great length, and, and you, you know, obviously you're not going to get many open looks against them, but we had a couple that rolled around the rim there, which might have been able to help us settle in a little bit and, um, and be able to, uh, again, change defenses on them. But the, the, the run was fantastic. I mean, their effort in the second half, the way that they played, they were, they were terrific. And I, I think that the average viewer would probably um, attest most of it to their offense. But they, they were out in transition because they were getting stops. They were playing with crazy amount of energy, uh, running and jumping both in the half court and the full court. And uh, it was a great adjustment. And uh, obviously, again, we, we did just enough. We were very fortunate to hold on. Right side. Uh, David Eichel, 24-7 sports. Coach, uh, you guys for the first 10 minutes were getting out rebounded 10-2, uh, to 2, but then the next 10 minutes you out rebounded them 12-2. to 2. How'd you kind yeah. of change the intensity for you guys in terms of energy, effort, and just getting after the 50-50 balls? Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure that, that we, we made a big adjustment there. First media, I remember talking to our guys, they t and they talked. You know, our, our seniors have taken pretty good ownership here, especially late in the season, led by Kavarius and, and Jalen as well here lately, um, understanding that we were getting beat up on the glass a little bit, led by Jordan Caroline, who um, he's got to be as good offensive rebounder as we've played all year. He is just a handful. Um, you know, some of it is the ball bouncing to you a little bit, but I, I also thought that uh, once the ball went in for us a few times, we, we settled in, and um, you know, sometimes that can happen for you. We, we, you play with a little bit more pep in your step, um, you know, with with a lead uh, when you're in a, a decent flow, getting some stops and getting some scores. A question on the left side, Coach. Did you feel like this was a new level of a resolve that your team showed down the stretch? I mean, they they did make it interesting, but they got within two, and you guys still held them off. Yeah, no, I, I would say similar. I mean, we've had well, I, uh, w w playing in the SEC and then playing the non-conference schedule that we, that we played. It seems like we've had, I'm just guessing off the top of my head, 15 games like that. We're, we're late in the game. You know, it's a one-two possession game within a couple minutes, whether you're up or down. And we had a stretch in the middle of the season where we found ways to, to lose those games. Uh, continued to play really hard. and. Um, lost some poise, lost a little composure at times. And then we went on a stretch where we won some of those games. And then um, we had the, the home game against LSU where um, you know, we lost a heartbreaker. And then we were able to win a heartbreaker against LSU in the SEC tournament, then lose a heartbreaker to Auburn. So we've been here in these type situations a bunch. This one may be a little bit more unique in that you're up big and they make that type of a run. Um, but, but you use the word resolve, I believe. Um, yeah, this this team um, has been pretty good in in that category and and gotten better throughout the year. Um, this team early in the year I thought had a little bit of toughness. I, I think this team now possesses a lot of toughness and mentally um, we've probably made a bigger improvement than, than the the physical level of toughness uh, in that. I think it's more important to our seniors here late in the year and our freshmen have grown up a lot. We're under five minutes in this session. We have two questions on the left side. Chris Murray, Nevada Sportsnet. Uh, you're going against Jordan Caroline and Caleb Martin, two All-American candidates, and you hold them to nine turnovers to seven made field goals. Why were you so effective limiting those two really talented players? You, you know, um, we, we've been really good defensively all year. We really have. I mean, I'm, look at their, I'm looking at their offensive numbers, and we've had a lot of performances like that. This team, we, we've just struggled to score at times. Um, I think slowing the tempo helped us a lot because if, if they lived in transition offense the whole game, of course, we would have been in trouble. Uh, they, they're, they're so electric playing downhill. Um, Jalen said it, you know, it was a team effort by setting our half court defense. It gave us a better chance to guard these guys. Our guys have had active hands. Um, our guys have gotten more competitive throughout the year. Um, I thought we contested a lot of shots, but I also thought they missed a few for us. Um, 
you know, especially late in the game. You know, I, I, thought, I thought that um, both of the Martin twins had a few open looks that, you know, sometimes it's a make or miss game, and we were fortunate that they did. Um, you know, beyond that, I don't, I don't know that we did anything really special. You know, I, I, I would say probably more than anything, um, it came with a preparation and level of respect that was necessary to guard these guys. You know, our, our guys, when you watch film on these guys and you, sh and you show personnel, our guys were like, wow. You know, they, they knew that we had our hands full. They knew that we'd have to guard at a really high level um, to have success tonight. We have a final, final question on the left side there. Coach Julio Rauseo of SportstownChicago.com. 344 mark of the game, final media timeout. Can you describe what the huddle was like and how proud of you of your guys to be able to close out the game after that timeout that they brought it back to within two and you guys yeah. were able to finish it out? Just describe the huddle and how proud of you of your guys for finishing it yeah, out. Yeah, really proud. I mean, we looked a little disconnected there for about six or seven minutes. When the run started, we looked like we could stymie it and, and we'd be fine. All of a sudden, they cut it to maybe 10, and we looked a little different. But when it was in single digits there for a while, really until past that, that's probably the mark there, probably the, the last media. Um, I, I didn't like the body language. Uh, I, I was very concerned with our level of, we, we talked about toughness um, and focus. I thought we were just watching the clock, you know, and hoping a little bit. And we'd been there early in the year. Um, I don't know what the score was at the last media, but I know we simply we got a couple stops there and um, and 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 converted a little bit, whether it be a field goal or two. I, I don't quite remember, but I know we converted some there at the foul line late that allowed us to uh, to change defenses. Um, and then you know I, I thought that uh, we did a pretty good job in our zone um, late in the game. Congratulations! That'll conclude our uh, press conference. The Florida locker room will be open for an additional 15 minutes. We have Florida uh, student athletes and coaches tomorrow, starting at Joined by the Wolfpack from Nevada at this time, we had an opening comment from uh, Coach Musselman. I just give Florida a lot of credit. I thought they played really hard, uh, controlled the pace of the game in that first half. Um, you know, we missed some crucial free throws um, down the stretch, and you know, guys had a good year, but we uh, weren't good enough today. This time we'll take questions for our student athletes. Please raise your hand. We have a microphone over your way. Left side, second row. Chris Murray, Nevada Sportsnet. Uh, Cody, I mean, this game looked very similar to the games against Texas and Cincinnati. You guys you know, got into a big hole and then made that push. Why, why were you guys unable to get over the hump in this one like you were in those two games? Um, we just didn't get the stops that we needed. Uh, like he said, we missed a lot of crucial free throws that we kind of needed. But I mean, at the same time, we realistically, the, the problem was we didn't start all good in the first half. And that 
seems to be what we do all the time. And uh, I mean, this time we just couldn't get over the hump um, against a good team who slows the pace down. And uh, unfortunately, this time it just didn't work. Left side aisle. Uh, Duke Rittenhouse, Reno Gazette Journal. Um, for Cody again, you mentioned you mentioned pace, and, and Florida had the reputation of, of being slower than you guys. Was there anything they did that surprised you? Any frustration on that, or, or were you guys prepared for that? No, I mean we're all, we're always prepared because our coaching staff does a great job of always making sure that we know them better than, than anybody. And um, I mean we just you know at the beginning of the, at the beginning of the game in the first half we were moving the ball really well and. I mean, that's on me. I, I'm a point guard who has no assist. So, um, I mean, I got to do a better job of making sure we're moving the ball. We had four assists as a team, I think, to their 11, I mean, to their 10. So, I mean, that's on me that I got to control the pace, but I got to control the tempo and make sure we got our teammates involved and I didn't do a good job of that. And, and um, I mean, nothing surprised us, honestly. We knew them. We knew what they were going to do. And, uh, unfortunately, we just had a lot of mental breakdowns. Um, didn't, like you said, didn't make free throws, and just didn't get off to a good start. And try to try to come back as usual, and it just didn't work. Stay on the left side. Chris Murray, Nevada Sportsnet. To, to Trey Sean, I mean, you guys seem like you really were able to speed them up. Uh, you know, over the maybe the final 12, 14 minutes. What did you guys do defensively to you know speed them up and, and be able to get back into the game and get in transition offensively? Um, we made an adjustment to trap uh, Nevin Hart when he had the ball. He's a good point guard. Makes good play. He makes plays for his teammates, and we had to get the ball out of his hands. They were milking the clock, and so we had to uh, pick randomly to just trap him at random times. Another question on the left side aisle. Uh, for for the seniors, uh, how would you like to be remembered? And then also, Trey Sean, you're being from Omaha. Did you have a big a big fan following here tonight? Start with Trayshawn first and Cody. Um, just a hard playing dude, I guess. I mean, um, gave him my all. Every time I stepped on the court from Nevada, I gave him my all. And I cared about this team and I cared about winning. And, um, you know, as a senior, that's what you're supposed to do. And so um, you're supposed to come out and you're supposed to play and you're supposed to put your heart on the line for these other guys in jerseys next to you. Uh, you're supposed to care. Like, that's the number one thing you're supposed to care. And I cared about the Nevada van fan base. And I cared about my teammates enough to play every game I could. And um, for the following, that's, that was just that was great to see, I guess. Um, I mean, I hope, you know, uh, on our way out, I hope people understand and uh, think that we represented our community in Nevada the best that we could. And um, not only on the court, but off the court, having character guys. Um, being good kids, you know, putting people, putting other people first besides yourself. And at the end of the day, like you said, just caring. And I hope that people understand that how much work that we put in and how much a lot of us has sacrificed to get to this point. And there's a lot of people that didn't think there's a lot of us that we would have got to this point. You know, unfortunately, we didn't go as far as we wanted to. And, uh, you know, at the end of the day, I'm not satisfied with how it ended. But, you know, I, I'm really glad that we got to um, – I got to go this far with this group of guys, and I had a lot of fun throughout the season. Couldn't ask for a better team. Couldn't ask for better coaching staff. I mean, they gave me everything. So I, you know, I just want them to to know that, you know, as a team and as a whole, that we try to represent Nevada the best we could. Left side. We'll take. We'll also take questions at this time for head coach. Uh, Chris Murray, Nevada Sportsnet. Jazz, I guess, how, how would you describe this season? I know you guys came in with a lot of goals and you're able to achieve all, a lot of them, but, but not all of them. How, how would you just sum up how this year went? Um, it was for sure a learning experience, especially for a guy like me, uh, you know, who's never been here. Um, and, you know, I was just, I had the opportunity to learn from a lot of uh, good players. And, you know, I never thought I would meet guys like this, and I'm blessed to have the ability to learn from these guys and learn from this coaching staff. And, you know, it's, like I said, it's a big learning learning experience, you know, and we all got a lot better this season. And, you know, like Cody said, we didn't get as far as we wanted, but, you know, we made a lot of memories. And, you know, we'll, we'll be brothers forever. Go to the left side, and then we'll go to the back row. Go ahead. Oh, this is 
for Coach uh, Julio Rauseo, SportstownChicago.com. Coach, what did you notice in the first half that gave your guys uh, a bit of trouble? And uh, take us through those first few moments of the second half where a bit of a run came and then Florida started to go back on their march. Yeah, I mean, that we, we just didn't make a lot of shots. Um, some guys that normally score the ball for us had off nights. Uh, and when you shoot some of the percentages that we did, you're, you're, you're going to struggle and not win games. So, um, you know, we tried to junk it up defensively, and, and uh, our guys executed that defensive game plan great to try to speed them up. And uh, we had them on their heels a little bit, and, and a couple calls happened, and, um, you know, momentum shifted and changed, and, and uh, you know, we got beat by a team that outplayed us tonight. Back row, left side. Oh, uh, yeah. <clears throat> Chuck Culpepper from the Washington Post for Cody. Um, nutty things happen in this tournament every year, but given the season you had, this finish really doesn't seem to fit. I wonder if you find it, you know, especially shocking this end, this, that it ended like this. Um, I would say more irritating than anything just because um, there was a lot of goals that we wanted to accomplish that we didn't meet. And, um, you know, you kind of just got to live with that. But... I mean, at this point, it is what it is. You can't really dwell on it. Um, I don't know. Um, I know a lot. Of, I know our our team and our coaches have put in a lot of time, a lot of preparation to even get to this point. But it just sucks that you know it, it got cut short. Um, um, you know, you wish you had possessions back. You can't get that done. Uh, but at the end of the day, you know. You can sit there and, I mean, I hope all of us can sit there and say that we left it all out there on the line, that we gave 110%. And if that isn't the case, then that's an issue. And, you know, at this point, you just got to keep it moving. And, you know, like I said, it is what it is. But, I mean, I'm proud of our guys. I'm proud of how they fought. I'm proud of how we fought. Um, I wish we would have started off a little bit better. But, you know, that's what happens. And like Coach said, they just, I mean, they just happen to outplay us. So, uh, yeah. Under five minutes in this session on the left side. Uh, Duke Rittenhouse, Reno Gazette Journal for, for Coach. Um, you know, I, don't, I know it's hard to sum up a six-month season as we all sit here, but and I know you think this is a special group, and I was wondering if you could tell us just, you know, right now what you think of this group. Yeah, I mean, I'd, I mean, it's 21 teams, I think, that have been to uh, three straight NCAA tournaments, and, and you can look up the names of the programs of the 21. And we've come a long way in a short amount of time, and, and uh, proud of uh, proud to coach these guys. I mean, things weren't going well. We struggled, and they fought back and, and got within a possession of the game. And, and uh, you know, I'm proud to coach these guys. And, and uh, you know, we got a lot of guys in that locker room that are really hurting. A lot of guys that are really tough-minded people, and, and they'll be successful in life. Um, because of their toughness and, and uh, competitive nature. And um, so, I mean, I think a lot of these seniors have won a lot of games uh, for our program and uh, given our, our fans a lot of good times. And tonight, uh, you know, we came up short, and, and, and so it hurts and stings. Chris Murray, Nevada Sports Now for Cody. Um, can you just take us through your day? We've heard you had a couple of IVs uh, today and we're not feeling well. And then I guess the second part of that question is you guys had five assists in your last game, four assists in this game. I guess what happened to you guys offensively over the last couple of games in the last couple of weeks? Um, honestly, I think that we just got uh, stagnant as a group, including myself. I think um, we started trying to go a lot, a lot of one-on-one -on -one ball instead of making sure the team was involved. And a lot of that's on me as a point guard. I got to make sure that the ball's getting popped, uh, and everybody's touching the ball, making sure everyone's involved. And for me to have zero assists is kind of ridiculous. And um, I don't look at stats and stuff like that, but you know, when I look at that, I'm just it's irritating. And I don't know what I had the game before, or game before that. I don't look at that stuff. But if it's like that, it's it's really irritating. And um, I mean, yeah, earlier, I mean, I, I don't really like to talk about it because it's, it's um, I feel like it's making excuses. So. Yeah, I got some IVs. I just really wasn't feeling well. So um, I just, you know, we just didn't play well enough. Time for one final question. Uh, 
Uh, I guess just to, to coach, um, you guys came in the season with a lot of expectations and, and you did a lot of great things, you know, winning 29 games. How do you think you'll think about this season, you know, over the off season, what you guys were able to accomplish and, and where you fell short in reaching your goals? Well, I, you know, again, I, I think when you look at our record, um, it's going to go down in one of the best in school history. So tonight it hurts, and tomorrow it'll hurt, and it'll hurt in a week from now. Um, but to have 29 wins and or whatever, and 29-5 or whatever it is, it's, you know, we had a great year. We didn't advance in the tournament. And there's a lot of really, really good teams that at the end of this weekend, they're not going to advance either. And there's a lot of really good programs that aren't in this tournament, that have great facilities, that have great budgets, that have great everything. And it's hard to make this tournament. It's hard to make this tournament back-to-back -back years uh, as an at-large. And, uh, and we've done that. And, uh, you know, now I got to get with Jazz and some of the sit out guys and, and get ready for next year. And uh, I look forward to coaching those guys and, and start working with them. I mean, I'll be working on depth charts tonight for next year. I want to thank uh, Coach Musselman and the uh, seniors on a great career. Best of luck in the future. Thanks, man. Thank, thank you. you.